How's it going, guys? It is 1.57 a.m. Thursday, July 21st here in Japan, and we have a past level question for surgery slash farm. Some of you will see this question, think it's too easy. Relax, okay? Yes, some of the questions I make will be uh, very buzzy and high yield, such as this. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel down below. And I'll start the clip. 28-year-old woman develops tachycardia diaphoresis, blood pressure 150 over 100 one day after abdominal operation. She has a history of IV drug use and is seropositive for hepatitis C. Question wants to know the most appropriate next step management. Let's just whip through the answer choices here. We'll go backwards. Choice F, thiamine. Wrong fucking answer. So vitamin B1. Obviously very important to give to patients who come into hospital unconscious. Uh, part of the coma cocktail, colloquially. So thiamine, glucose, naloxone. The point is, do not fucking give glucose prior to thiamine. If a patient is thiamine deficient, B1 deficient, such as with alcoholism, you can precipitate slash exacerbate Wernicke encephalopathy. A cow, okay, like the animal. Ataxia, confusion, ophthalmoplasia, Wernicke, high yield presentation. Wrong fucking answer. Naloxone, wrong answer. Okay, so opioid receptor antagonist, part of the coma cocktail, as I just said. Uh, so patients who have opioid intoxication, okay, heroin, morphine, fentanyl, oxycodone, mepiridine. Uh, so pinpoint people's respiratory depression. Wrong fucking answer. A, a high yield tangential point I should actually make though is especially a high yield for the 2CK uh, CMS forms for psych. That naltrexone, another opioid receptor antagonist, is used to curb alcohol cravings. Okay, so if you want to decrease uh, the uh, relapse of a patient into alcoholism, naltrexone, for whatever fucking reason, can curb cravings for alcohol. Choice D, glaisaprevir, wrong answer. Just stupid fucking agent that has no yieldness for US simile. It's one of the treatments for hepatitis C. Okay, when students don't know an answer, they choose weird sounding shit. So I just threw this in here to be a fucking asshole. Choice C, flumazenil, wrong answer. Albeit high yield drug, you need to know this is a benzodiazepine receptor antagonist, okay? So patients who uh, have been taking diazepam, okay, they say uh, empty bottle of pills, they're on diazepam, and you need to know that flumazenil is the antidote, okay? As I said, it's just past level. Benzodiazepines can cause respiratory depression. So it's one of the agents that can be tried. The way this can show up on US in particular is they like to give you barbiturate toxicity. And they'll say that a patient has a respiratory depression is unconscious and flumazenil and naloxone had no effect. Holy shit, OMG. Okay, so what they mean to say is if flumazenil didn't work, it wasn't a benzo the patient took. If naloxone didn't work, it wasn't an opioid. And then you're left with the barbiturate. Wrong fucking answer. Phenoldopam, wrong answer. This is a dopamine one receptor agonist. Okay, literally no relation, no role here. Uh, D1 agonist, phenoldopam, could be used to dilate the afferent arterioles going to the kidney in the setting of hypertensive emergency. Patients given uh, sodium nitroprusside, you drop the patient's blood pressure, but you can help maintain renal perfusion in the setting. Correct answer is chloridazepoxide. Now, this is a benzodiazepine. Similar to uh, diazepam, lorazepam. Okay, so the only challenge per se regarding this question is some students might not be aware that this is a benzo. They say chloridize epoxide. What the fuck? Okay, I mean, because it sounds weird, right? It doesn't have the classic suffix like lorazepam, diazepam. It doesn't end in pam. Okay, but this is a high yield drug. The presentation here is delirium tremens. Okay, they're going to tell you patient uh, had surgery one to three days ago. Students get hysterical over the timeline. It doesn't fucking matter. They're going to say a patient one to three-ish days following surgery. It's tachycardia, diaphoresis, tremulousness, can even get alcohol hallucinosis, okay, visual or tactile hallucinations. They just want you to know it's alcohol withdrawal. They can give you the same fucking question. The answer, they just say, what's the cause? The answer is alcohol withdrawal. Not difficult, okay? You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.